Hello all you my viewers out there and welcome to Dr. BMS channel. Today I would like to talk about alcohol. The good things that alcohol does to you and the bad things that it does to you as well. I've chosen alcohol today because in my work at our center, the Fountain of Hope Rehabilitation Center, we deal with alcohol addiction more than any other drugs of addiction. And I believe most of you, my viewers, are more familiar with the effects of alcohol than other drugs of addiction. So I would like us today to talk about alcohol, the good, the bad, and the ugly of alcohol. So straight on, what are the good effects of alcohol? I would like to start by saying that alcohol is a drug of recreation which causes addiction, but that it is not illegal in many countries. This is different from other drugs of recreation which cause addiction, like marijuana, like uh, cut, like cocaine, heroin, and all those drugs, you know. So this makes alcohol unique because people can take it legally and freely, and this can make them become complacent to the bad effects that alcohol may give because they may reason that because it's Ill, it's not illegal, it's legalized, so there's nothing wrong with it. I would like us to delve into that today so that as you make a decision to take alcohol, then you are informed about the good and the bad of alcohol. To start us off, I would like us to go through the journey of alcohol in our bodies. From the time we take the first sip or gulp, up to the time we get drunk or we are said to be addicted, what happens? So alcohol is ethanol and it is found or created by fermentation of sugars to create a chemical called ethyl alcohol or ethanol. And this chemical, usually in a liquid form because it is mixed with water, and so it is taken by drinking, imbibing through the mouth to the stomach and absorption to the rest of the body. And so the journey of alcohol starts with you taking it in the mouth and unique to alcohol compared to other drinks like water or other liquids, alcohol gets absorbed from the mouth. It has the ability to get absorbed through the lining of the mouth and directly into the blood stream. These are small quantities, however. The majority of what you take as alcohol, you swallow it and it goes to the stomach. And this is where the real absorption starts in the stomach and down into the intestines. It's absorbed directly into the blood stream and some of it also passes through the liver before it goes to the bloodstream. But the effects of alcohol in our bodies start being seen when it has reached the bloodstream and the blood then transports it to all the body organs through all the body systems and this is where the effects can be seen. Once it has been absorbed and it's circulating in the body causing its effect, after a while it starts getting removed or metabolized out of the body. And this is done in the liver, in the kidney, and also in the lungs. The lungs are of importance here uh, for people who have been stopped by traffic police to check the level of intoxication using the famous alcohol blow. 
is because part of the alcohol you take is removed from the body through the lungs by breathing out. And so the air that comes out of your lung will have elements of alcohol in it, which can be picked by the breath analyzer machine or the alcohol blow. And when the alcohol is still circulating in your body or in our bodies before it is removed, it causes effects. These effects are short term, medium term, and long term. And this is what I would like us to talk about today. These effects are also good effects and the bad effects as well. The good effects I would like to mention from outset are the reason why almost all of us partake in alcohol because we are looking for the good. But many of us are unaware or ignore that the good does not come alone, it comes with the bad. So today I would like to open the whole box so that we look inside and see the good as well as the bad. So once you've taken your alcohol and it has started traveling through your body, it has been absorbed and is moving through the blood to all the systems, you have effects that start showing immediately within minutes. And these effects then proceed for the entire period of your drunk state and even after you have recovered from your drunk state. The effects within the first minutes, the short-term effects, are usually felt in the brain and the nervous system almost exclusively. The other organs and systems of the body are spared of these effects to a large extent. But the brain and the nervous system show effects almost immediately. And these effects start from the good effects and progress to the not so good effects. So the good effects that show immediately after taking alcohol is you get stimulated. You get that stimulation of the mind, the brain. You are more active. You are more motivated. Your level of happiness goes high. Elation, you are more elated. We call that euphoria in technical terms. So you are euphoric and you seem to be alert, more active in the conversation that is going on, enjoying what is going on, enjoying that game of football, interacting with your friends, and everything seems to be happy and gay. But this lasts just a short time because beyond that things start going down and i'll talk about it shortly but during this time of elation stimulation also you may exhibit aggression aggression means that you do things that you normally do with more vigor with more fervor so if you are talking you are loud you are stressing your point and everyone can see you are animated, agitated. If you feel offended, you want to fight, you want to get even, and you are more brazen. So we say you are losing your inhibition, your sense of shame, your sense of what is right and wrong starts going down. And you can do things that you normally would be ashamed to do if you are not drunk. So we say you are losing inhibition. All these effects, mainly good effects, progressing to bad effects, like when you start getting aggressive and losing inhibition, doing shameful things, are usually seen within a short period of time of taking alcohol. And then as you progress into hours, then the effects start to change. Still, the brain and the nervous system is affected more than the other organs at this early stage. But that state of being excited, motivated, starts to go down. The elation, the euphoria starts to go down 
and you start going through a state of depression. This means the brain function is starting to slow down. You are even starting to get more drowsy. You feel sleepy. Your level of concentration is going down. You cannot do many tasks that require great concentration for long period of time. For example, the fine tasks like you are driving or operating a machinery, you are reading a book, you are doing a calculation of mathematics, you are attending a lecture and listening to your lecturer. These start to go down because they require higher levels of concentration and alcohol starts killing concentration after the first few minutes of excitement. And so this depression of the higher function is one of the reversal effects you see in alcohol as you continue to take. Of note here also is that by this time, the effects are moving away from the brain and the nervous system to other systems like the urinary system. You're getting stimulated to urinate more because alcohol dehydrates. It stimulates the production of hormones in your body which make you lose water beyond what you are taking in because alcohol is usually in liquid form and so you may notice you've taken one bottle of beer but the amount of times you've gone out to urinate will equate to more than that one bottle of beer and so you are losing more water than you are taking in as you continue taking if it's one night and the hours are going by then we get more and more of depression or lowering of the higher function until you reach a stage where you are very drowsy and you fall into a stupor the young people call it you black out so at this stage your level of mental or higher function brain function depression has gone to a level where you now cannot sustain yourself and you fall into deep sleep. You are unresponsive, your senses are dulled out and you're like half dead and this is the stupor or the blackout. So if you stay in that state of blackout, you will sleep through it as the body metabolizes this alcohol, removes it through the liver, and the kidney and the other systems I've mentioned until the drink you have taken has largely been removed from the body. And then you wake up and you may be feeling a hangover, which is another effect of taking alcohol. And the hangover comes because you have been dehydrated and with the loss of water during dehydration you also lose important salts of the body so the body is in a, a deprived state of water and important salts and minerals and you suffer the effects like you have less concentration again you have x headache body x you have nausea you have vomiting and you cannot concentrate on things that you need to do. These are the effects of the hangover, which normally come the day after a night of drinking. And so the effects of alcohol then progress. If you go drinking the second or the third day and you continue for a month, and this becomes a habit that is going on for months and years, then you start seeing the middle medium level to long-term effects of alcohol and this then move from effects on the brain and the nervous system and the urinary system which i've described earlier to effects to on all the body systems and of note here is that these effects then become cumulative one adds on to the other as you continue drinking over time and drinking more and more so the effects in the medium and the long term add up on each other so that small becomes big progressively and now before we go 
into the details of the medium and the long term effects, I would like to remind my viewers some basic rules that govern these effects that we're talking about. That generally the effects of alcohol are such that first you get the good effects. I've talked about you feeling elated, feeling more sociable, enjoying that game, being with your friends and feeling nice. So those feelings of happiness and good times come before the bad feelings of hangover, of vomiting, of being dehydrated and the long-term effects that I'm about to talk about. The other rule is that the good effects of alcohol will last a shorter period compared to the bad. So if you go out to drink on an evening with your friends, you feel happy, you are dancing, you are talking, animatedly making friends, your level of uh, shyness has gone down so you can approach girls and be able to talk to them and make friends. But that is just going to last that evening and the following day, waking up with a hangover and continuing with the bad effects that I'm about to describe, this will last much, much longer. The last rule governing the effects of alcohol on our bodies is that the cumulative effect that I mentioned earlier means that the bad effects that start showing soon after the good effects have worn off will gradually accumulate so that they turn ugly and now they erase almost everything you ever enjoyed so let's go to the long term and the medium term effects of alcohol i will talk about them starting with the positive ones and then go to the not so positive ones as i have said if you look in my illustration here the good ones have illustrated in green ink and the not so good one in the red ink and as i said earlier that usually the good effects precede the bad effects the good effects start immediately you start enjoying your alcohol and they are centered around the nervous system, the brain and the nervous system, and a few other systems I'll describe. And the good effects are to do with you feeling happy, you feeling relaxed, socializing, enjoying the social environment you are in, and just being a person who is less stressed. You forget about your worries, and now the world is this nice place to be in also in the stomach the digestive system alcohol has this good effect of improving appetite for a number of people when you're starting to enjoy that first drink then you find your appetite has improved and you can eat well and perhaps this is why most of the drinkers like in our country kenya will also want to eat some roast meat nyamachoma and all those because immediately they start taking alcohol their appetite also improves and in the circulatory system the heart and the blood and the blood vessels a little alcohol at the beginning is known to improve the blood pressure. It relaxes you, and so your blood pressure goes down. And it's also known to improve the heart function by preventing clots forming and occurrence of heart attacks through formation of clots. So this three areas I have mentioned are the good effects of alcohol. As you will see in the illustration here, this middle column has what is called the alcohol limits. And I will talk about this in detail. 
short time from now. But to note this early is that the good effects of alcohol that I've described are only experienced when you are taking small amounts of alcohol, the recommended amounts of alcohol, which we'll talk about in a short while. And then so after the bad effects follow and the bad effects tend to be more, as I've said, they last longer. And unfortunately, again, they affect more body systems. So when you start taking your first drink, after that feeling of relaxation and elation, euphoria, being happy, socializing, soon you start losing your inhibition, that sense of good and bad, moral and immoral. What is shameful and what is right to do in front of people, you start losing it. That is called disinhibition. You also start being aggressive. You talk aggressively, you act aggressively, you can get into quarrels and fights very easily. And as I said, you start getting clumsy, the finer roles that require coordination and concentration start to go down. So you are likely to get into accidents. And on this system of the brain and the nervous system also, the effect of addiction, which we deal with in our center, and we talk about a lot on Dr. PMS channel, addiction starts to develop when you find that you cannot avoid taking alcohol. You want it every day and you want more and more of it. And it's now controlling your life so that you are neglecting many other things that you're supposed to do at home, at school, at work, just because you are drinking or you are looking for alcohol, then we say you are addicted. At the tail end, the long-term end of this journey, the brain and the nervous system is affected by you getting what is called mental degeneration. Mental degeneration, or dementia is a situation where the brain has started shrinking such that it cannot function like the brain of a human being. You start being more forgetful of things. You start losing the ability to learn, to be able to associate your environment with yourself and the components of the environment so that you become like a blind person, like a deaf person, like a person who is losing their senses. You are degenerating mentally, and we call this dementia, which can be brought about by alcohol intake for long periods of time in high quantities. The other systems also are affected, as I said. You've all heard about cirrhosis of the liver. The liver, the pancreas, the digestive system are affected uh, massively by alcohol. The liver gets cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is shrinking of the liver, where the alcohol you take, because the liver is the one charged with the burden of metabolizing this alcohol all the time, so the liver starts to shrink. And over time, it cannot function to metabolize that alcohol and other food items that we take and so you get cirrhosis or a shrink and liver there is pancreatitis where the pancreas another important organ in our body's digestive system which produces important digestive hormones and also produces insulin for regulation of blood sugar the pancreas starts getting affected and sometimes it loses its functions so that you develop, among other things, diabetes or poor sugar regulation, indigestion, and other digestive problems. Generally then, because of this, your immunity starts to get low. Your body gets weak because when you eat food, you cannot use this food like a normal person. So you become weak immune-wise, and you are like someone who has a chronic illness like HIV or cancer, but it's just because of taking too much alcohol. The other body systems affected 
we have the bones, the skeletal tissue. The bones get weak, they get light, they break easily. We call this osteoporosis. And it's because the body cannot use important nutrients like calcium, phosphorus, because the digestion is bad, absorption is bad, the liver is not functioning, and things are just not going well. Then, overall, the body systems are prone to cancers. Some of the important cancers that have been shown to be high in people who are using too much alcohol are cancer of the colon, cancer of the breast, and many other cancers. They are common in such people because with the body's lowered immunity, then the bad cancerous cell can develop and challenge and grow to full-blown cancer. Also, people who are taking alcohol to those levels that are not recommended are prone to having problems with their fertility. The reproductive system is affected. They are not able to have children. Uh, women may lose their periods, their monthly periods before they reach the age of menopause. And generally, the ability to have children will go down. And so these bad effects that I have mentioned in a nutshell across many body systems are because you are taking alcohol for long periods of time and beyond the recommended levels. So what are the recommended levels? When you use alcohol, it is recommended that a female, a woman, should not take more than one drink of alcohol per day. And a man should not take more than two drinks per day. And to give you a moment to let that to sink in while I connect my And one drink a day or two drinks a day are such that you cannot take what you missed yesterday and carry it forward to the new day. We will be discussing that in a short time. But just remember the recommended levels. One drink for female, two drinks for male per day. So, you may ask, then what is one drink? Does it mean one beer or one bottle of vodka? One drink or a standard unit of alcohol is, if it is a beer which normally contains about 5% alcoholic content, you are not to take more than 360 ml if you are a female that is one drink and not more than 720 ml for a man those are two drinks if it's a malt beer like guinness you are not supposed to take more than 240 ml which is like quarter of a liter if you are a, a female because that is one drink and not more than 480 ml of a malted beer like guinness if you are a male because that is two drinks so that's like half a liter for wine which contains slightly more alcohol at about 12%, one drink is 150 ml, which equates to just one small glass of wine for a woman and two for a man. For spirits, and spirits here we are talking about vodka, whiskey, gin, all those hard drinks, one unit, the recommended unit is 45 ml, which equates to just a tot 
for a female and two thirds for male. So that is the recommended limit. And as I said, this is per day and you are not allowed to carry over so that if you didn't drink yesterday, you now say instead of taking two tots, today I'll take four. You will have exceeded the daily allowance. And so, what then are the good alcohol use patterns? If you are observing those limits I have mentioned and you want to avoid those effects that I have mentioned. If you are a low risk user or a responsible user, then you should be a user who keeps within the limits. One drink per day maximum for female, two drinks per day maximum for male or a man. And it is also advised that you abstain from drinking as often as you can. This then means that one or two drinks per day is not instruction for you to drink from Monday to Sunday. No. Drink when you feel you need to have a drink. Drink within limits and a number of days take a break abstain from drinking. Next, that do not compensate for the days that we have said you abstained or you missed. So every day, just one or two drinks, depending on your sex, and you don't take what you missed yesterday because you will have gone beyond the limbo. Responsible drinking or low risk use of alcohol then also means that when you go out drinking, you stick to one drink type for that day. So you went out with your friends and you are taking a beer tasker, take your one tasker, if you are female, or two taskers, and that's it. Do not take tasker and then ask for whiskey because you are mixing drinks and in the process you are going to go beyond your allowed limit or recommended limit. Also, as I have said when I began, that alcohol absorption starts in the mouth and goes through the stomach and the intestines. This means that if your digestive system your stomach is empty, your absorption of alcohol will be much higher. So you will get drunk faster, you will get those good and bad effects of alcohol much faster. So, because I said the good effects last for just a short period of time before the bad effects come in, and because you went out to have a good time with your friends, you want the good effects to last a bit longer. You want to socialize longer, to enjoy being with your friends longer before you lose inhibitions and you lose your concentration and start being drowsy. So you are advised to drink after eating a main meal. Eat something before you take your recommended drink. It slows down the absorption and also it makes your body have more than just alcohol to deal with. You have the nutrients, the vitamins, the proteins that are in the food you are eating, which will be useful for your body. Okay. It is also advised for responsible drinking to drink alcohol with water. Remember I said alcohol causes dehydration. And so if it is causing your body to lose more water than it is bringing in because alcohol is usually liquid, then it makes sense to drink some water to compensate for this dehydration. And 
This will also help you the following morning when you wake up, you will avoid the effects of dehydration like hangover, which I mentioned earlier. Lastly, for responsible drinking for low risk users of alcohol, you are advised to have an active lifestyle. Go to the gym, do some sports, do some physical work. Don't be this person who just drinks and stays sedentary. From your house to the bar, you drive your car, you take a taxi, and you go to the bar and sit for hours and drink, and you take a taxi back, you drive back, and when you come home, you are this couch potato in just on the sofa, drinking and eating food. You are not physically active. And remember, alcohol has high levels of calories, so you're going to start adding weight, which is another effect, long-term effect of alcohol use that you will tend to add weight. So what about the high-risk users? Irresponsible use of alcohol means that, number one, you are exceeding the limits. The recommended one drink to two drinks per day with regular abstaining or with regular breaks, you are not doing it. You are hitting the bottle every day and you are exceeding the recommended limits. You are a high risk user, you are an irresponsible user, and you risk those medium to long term effects that I mentioned earlier. Also, a high risk user is this person who engages in binge drinking. Binge drinking means that you take high levels, big amounts of alcohol within a short time, within a day. So you go to the pub and you take six, seven, ten bottles of alcohol and get very drunk to a level where you are even vomiting because your stomach cannot hold this alcohol anymore. You are binge drinking and this is high risk usage. Not only are you exceeding the limits, but you are also bringing the bad effects of alcohol forward faster than someone who takes small amounts over a regular period. The third high risk user of alcohol is that person who mixes alcoholic types. They go out to drink and they are taking beer, then they take wine and they ask for whiskey. This mixing makes you exceed limits, but also makes the body accumulate the toxins from alcohol faster than if you are keeping to one type. Drinking without eating, as I've said, is not recommended because your body will absorb alcohol faster, you will get drunk faster, so the good effects of alcohol, like socializing, having a good time, will end very fast because once you start getting drunk, then the good effects of alcohol disappear and the bad starts showing up. And you did not want that. That's why you went out to have a good time, not a bad time. So eat something as you drink within the recommended levels. Take some water. A bad or irresponsible or high risk user is that person who allows themselves to get dehydrated because they are drinking alcohol and not replacing any water in the body. And so within a short time, they are starting to go out and urinate and they become dehydrated and start suffering the effects of dehydration then and later. And lastly, it's high risk use of alcohol to lead a sedentary lifestyle because as we've said, alcohol makes you gain weight, put on calories. And so if you are going to lead a sedentary lifestyle, you are not active, you are not exercising, you are not doing any physical work, then those bad effects of alcohol, like accumulation of fat, will start to show faster than someone who is active in their lives. And so then, You've gone out, 
you're having a good time, you probably a responsible user, you're keeping within the limits and observing the rules that I have just said. Does this mean then that anyone who is ready to do that should go out and take alcohol? No, the answer is no. We have people who are advised not to take alcohol at all, even if they wished to take, because their risk of developing adverse effects, the effects that I've mentioned earlier, is much higher than the average population. And before we look at this risk, I need to say this, that everyone, all of us are at some risk, because remember, alcohol, as I said, has got effects that are not good in your body and these effects will come to everyone and it's for this reason i say everyone is at risk but if you use it in moderation within the recommended levels then you minimize these bad effects as you maximize the good effects that i've also described and this is what we want so everyone is at risk but some people are more at risk and these are the groups of people who are more at risk and are advised to avoid alcohol altogether. Number one, if you come from a family that has a history of addiction, people in that family are known to be alcoholics, to be drunkards who have lost their jobs, lost their families, lost their education, sometimes gotten into accidents or ill health because of alcohol drinking you are better avoiding alcohol altogether because addiction or abuse of alcohol is known to run in families. And so you never know if this gene of alcoholism was transmitted to you by your parents and your four parents. You are better off avoiding alcohol altogether. And in future videos, I'm going to talk about alternative ways of having a good time without alcohol so that you don't feel like every time you have a party and you are with your friends you need to have alcohol because there are alternative ways of having a good time and socializing family history of addiction is a red zone avoid alcohol secondly when you are going through a difficult time psychologically socially it's best to avoid alcohol so people say i'm stressed nataka kupunguza mawazo i have problems i should just go and take some alcohol you are advised by dr bms who is a specialist in this area to avoid alcohol during these difficult times because when you take alcohol during the difficult times it will exacerbate, it will make worse the times you are going through. If you are going through a hard time financially and you're taking alcohol, then you are diverting this money that you could use to get yourself out of your situation to drinking. If you are mentally, psychologically feeling low, alcohol will have this feeling of making you go down that route of feeling low because remember I said when you start it stimulates you you feel elated energetic but that just lasts for minutes and after that you start feeling depressed you start feeling low and this depression is not just for doing tasks but it's also thinking and so people who are depressed for example people who have anxiety people who are going through psychologically difficult times if they take alcohol, they are likely to sink in the situation of self-pity, more depression. They are likely to start having suicidal thoughts, harming themselves, giving up, seeing life is not worth living because of the depressive effect of alcohol on the brain. You are advised to avoid alcohol during difficult psychologically or social difficult times. You are also advised to avoid and not take alcohol at all if you have mental illnesses. 
and I've written here in capital letters, all of them, if you have mental illnesses, depression, anxiety, PTSD, schizophrenia, psychosis, all these names you've had, if you have a problem of having mental instability or mental illness, you are advised to avoid alcohol completely because alcohol makes all mental situations worse. Biophysical illnesses. These are illnesses of the body. I talked about liver cirrhosis as one of the bad effects of alcohol. I talked about diabetes because alcohol makes the pancreas to get affected negatively and to stop producing insulin, the hormone that is required for use of sugar in your body. And so if you are abusing alcohol, you are likely to get cirrhosis, you get diabetes. And so if you have diabetes from other causes or a liver disease from other causes, you have heart disease, you have hypertension, then you are making a grave mistake to take alcohol when you already have these conditions that alcohol will make worse. People of an immature age, the legal age in Kenya is 18. But in some countries, the legal age for drinking is 21. And I wish we could move our legal age up higher to 21. Because when you are immature, it means that your brain has not fully formed. Immaturity in this case refers mainly to the brain. You may be big in body, but mentally you are still immature. And if alcohol has these effects I've described of depressing your mental functioning, lowering your mental function, then you can imagine what happens to a person who has immature or low brain function getting something that is pushing that low even lower, it is not good. When you are pregnant, if you are breastfeeding, or if you are doing delicate tasks like operating machinery, driving, you are advised not to take alcohol at all because pregnancy, for example, alcohol affects the baby directly. And we have a condition we call medically that alcohol fetal syndrome. This is a baby who is born of a mother who was alcoholic. They have deformities. If you look at their face, the organs, the ears, the nose, the eyes, how they speak, how they cry, because babies cry when they are born, then you will see this child is not normal. And this is caused by alcohol. Uh, other drugs of addiction, you know, smoking, but I'll talk about those in a letter. Today we are talking about alcohol. So pregnancy is affected negatively by alcohol. And when you are breastfeeding, lactating, the child is still young. Alcohol, if you take it, it will be transmitted through the breast milk to the child. So it's like the child is drinking and the bad effects of alcohol will be felt by the the baby through the breast milk. Operating machinery and driving, we know it. We've said alcohol makes you lose concentration, makes you lose ability to do fine tasks. So you are prone to accidents. And for this reason, it is ill-advised for you to drink alcohol when you are operating machinery or doing delicate tasks. Lastly, I'll talk about people who are overweight, obese. BMI is basal body mass index, not basal metabolic rate. I wanted to say that body mass index. This is a measure of how your weight compares to your body frame, your height. And so you can be of low weight for your height and age. You can be of normal weight or overweight or obese. Alcohol, as I said earlier, contains lots of calories and makes your body accumulate fats and more calories from the other foods. And so if you are overweight or obese and you're taking alcohol, it's like adding fuel to the fire. It's advised not to do that because if you do that, then you are a high risk user of alcohol 
and this is not wise. So, as I come to a conclusion of today's video, we said alcohol is not illegal and we take it freely, but it has got the good and the bad. The good precedes the bad. The good also lasts a shorter period compared to the bad. And the bad progresses to the ugly. And that these effects are cumulative. And so, as you go out taking alcohol, you need to know about this so that you either abstain from taking alcohol completely, you are non alcoholic, or if you take, then you are taking within the recommended levels. Note that those levels make you completely safe because I said once you take alcohol, you are at risk, but they lower the risks. And so it's a balance of probabilities so that you can enjoy your drink, but minimize the risks. And for this reason, I would say the issue of taking alcohol is something that you as an individual needs to think about seriously at a personal level. I watched a YouTube uh, video, these TikTok things, eh? and uh, it was uh, jokes, kind of. Someone had posted this, maybe some of you have seen, that this man who is doing an experiment kind of in a laboratory with two bottle jars okay glass jars so one he says has alcohol in it and another one has got water in it then he says i would like to demonstrate what happens when you take alcohol or an animal is exposed to alcohol and he proceeds to take two worms like earthworms and says, I'm going to drop this worm in this bottle of water, this jar of water, and another worm into this jar of alcohol, and we see what happens. So he does that, and then shakes a bit, and you see that the worm that is dropped into the jar of water continues to play, to move around, and the worm that is dropped in the jar of alcohol stops moving. Then he says, as you can see, alcohol kills the worm immediately, but water does not. And then he concludes by saying, the lesson from this experiment is that if you take alcohol, you will not have any worms in your stomach. So that is a joke, I guess, but... The message I want to pass from this story is that you need to think carefully about your usage of alcohol and ask yourself, are you taking alcohol to kill worms in your body or you are taking it for something else? Give yourself an answer. But remember, if you are taking it, to kill worms in your body, what else is it killing inside you apart from the worms? If it can kill worms that are made of biological cells, then it must be killing some other cells that are your own. So back to what I said, the issue of taking alcohol is something I invite you, my viewers, to think about it carefully and make a personal decision now that you know the effects, the good and the bad. And especially young people, I like talking to young people because in my work at the rehabilitation center here, I see many young people coming in with problems of alcohol and other drugs of addiction. So young people, as you get out into adulthood and you go to college and you start living away from your parents and being independent, you will 
get suggestions to use these things, alcohol, other drugs of recreation. You start off feeling like you want to have a good time, you want to socialize, but beware that it often goes further than that. And so with that awareness, I would like you to think seriously about your taking of alcohol so that you realize that it is a serious matter. It is not a joking matter which you just go in and partake and come out because you will come out with effects, good or bad, bad or ugly. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.